Record and wide. <coughs> record and close. So ask him. <coughs> wait, oh, wait. <coughs> Let me clear my feet. <coughs> Good to go. My hand can down. Okay. Take it a bit high. Okay. Is the booming short? No. But we are good to go. Hello there, and welcome to the maiden edition of That Car Show. This is a program designed for you, car lovers, car users, pedestrians, and anyone who uses a road. We've got a couple segments on today's episodes which are going to be covering road maintenance or road safety issues, driving tips, car maintenance, and a whole lot more. I trust you find this very interesting, and I recommend that you stay with us. So, guys, stay tuned and enjoy the show. So, for today's driving lesson, we'll be using a Toyota Corolla 2016 Sports uh, Model Edition, donated to us by Mr. Kwame Addison, a kind friend of mine, and it is an automatic transmission vehicle uh, type, which you later on see when we get into the interior. So, starting off with the engine uh, bay area, and for most cars, you know, the stuff will be in the right place. You know, some cars it might vary where certain parts are situated. We will uh, commence with uh, our oil area, that's the oil cup, uh, oil reservoir area. And then next, uh, that's our car battery. And then from there, we move on to our water tank area. And that is uh, yeah, uh, where you put in the water. That's a coolant reservoir. And then we move on to our brake fluid reservoir. And these are all bits you should be checking before you drive your vehicle. Now to check the oil, it has a dipstick which when you pull out, you realize there's a high notch and then there is a low notch. And this tells you at what level your, the oil in your engine or car is at and if you need to top up or uh, not. So uh, moving on to indicators, that's the left indicator, usually augmented by a driver mirror indicator for this car model. And then we move on to the right indicator and again augmented by a passenger mirror indicator light. We then move on to the interior starting with our mirrors, uh, that's the driver side mirror, uh, rear view mirror and then from the rear view mirror we move on to the passenger side mirror and these are really important for driving. And then next, uh, like I said in dealing with this vehicle is an automatic transmission type of vehicle uh, so once we get into the interior I'm going to be talking about uh, the gears, uh, some people say torque, selector, stuff like that but yeah that's your gear stick and then uh, that's a parking mode, that's reverse mode, that is next neutral mode which is N and then uh, drive mode and um, of course if you are going to be starting this vehicle you always need to press on the brake pedal before you can engage you know the engine that is your handbrake which you just press a small knob on the top and it releases it or it engages the handbrake so that the car is nice and secure an additional safety measure when it is packed now that is a start button this car is a push button type so of course like I was saying you step on the brake pedal and you press that button and the engine starts and uh, once it's, uh, the engine is running you can then engage the gears and uh, get it into parking with the red light on the car is in parking when I move it back uh, if you can see the light that's a neutral light and it's back to parking and uh, yeah and that's it for you know uh, that bit and then we then head on to uh, uh, the steering wheel Holding the steering wheel is really important, just as I'm doing. Some people call that a nine o'clock and three o'clock uh, hold, or something like that. Uh, it's basically to make sure the steer is really gripped tightly in both hands. You don't want to be doing any of that, as I'm indicating with a, a, a finger shaking. You know, that's what you should do. Left hand with a the thumb there, and then your right hand with your thumb there, and that keeps the steering wheel and the vehicle, of course, nice nicely under your control and uh, you know it's, it's a safer way to drive all right guys so it's time to drive our vehicle so first of all of course we're going to open it up and then before you commence driving it's important to make sure you're, you're sitting in the right way make sure there's enough leg room 
um, you're comfortable with how you're seated and of course you want to be able to engage the pedals without being feeling too cramped in there and then once you're seated and you, you feel you know your feet are okay down there with the pedals you've got to fasten your seat belt so um Esken, is it okay so now yes yeah, okay okay then cool so let me do that and i think i'll leave the door open for now so that i can show you what i'm doing inside here so like i said i adjust my ankles to make sure the seat is just right and then um pedals everything feels okay so now i can get my seat belt on in place and of course seat belts are important because uh, when you are involved in a collision or an accident is to ensure that you remain in the vehicle because uh, when a car rams into something momentum can carry you up through the windscreen or you know yeah accidents happen when people are flipped out of the vehicle and that's why your seat belt is in place another important feature also is your airbag which is for most cars you know some cars have uh, airbags situated elsewhere like you know the door panels and stuff like that I think this car, what I can see, you know, is a safety mechanism here, airbag, so that when you are involved in a collision and your body comes forward, first of all, the seat belt is going to ensure that most of your body stays here. So this is kind of rigid. It stays, but then of course there's a bit of leeway. Now, we don't, well, manufacturers don't want your forehead slamming into the steering wheel or the dashboard or anything. So that is why we have a an airbag over here. Now remember what I said from the beginning uh, with how you hold the steering wheel. Uh, some people call it the nine o'clock, um, two, two o'clock uh, hold. Like imagine a clock, you have nine in the morning over here and two in the afternoon, probably three in the afternoon over here. So you want to grip your steering wheel like this. Remember that it's quite important. Don't do this. Of course, you find lots of people driving around and you know, it looks, yeah, it looks cool, but that's not the right procedure. Now, why is that important? Because you have, a, you have an airbag here. Now, this device, like I said, when you are involved in a coalition, what happens is this will rupture out and you have an airbag, it's a bag filled with air. And what they found out is this. For people who drive like this, you may be involved in a coalition in which the airbag ruptures out and it can snap your forearm or your wrist or something because it comes out with a lot of you know velocity and you may think it's just a bag that's supposed to rupture all about funny things happen in life and you know you're involved in the coalition and next thing you know is like you know with your hand like this bam it's out and some bones are broken so please when you when it comes to driving keep both hands on the steering wheel like this and you know remember what i said with the thumbs you know get a firm grip and you should be in good control of the vehicle. So that's it for um, you know, holding the steering wheel and, uh, yeah, and those bits. So um, let's get down to it. It's time to you know engage the car and drive. So what am I doing now? My foot is on the brake pedal over there. I don't know if Eskin can see it. Eskin, is it clear enough? No, really. Okay, don't worry. We'll, we'll get some other footage in just to show demonstrate this bit. But what my right foot is now doing is <coughs> is on the brake pedal. <coughs> Now with a, with a car like this, it only starts when you step on the brake pedal and then with your gear, <coughs> there's an automatic transmission, some people call it torque transmission, with your gear in packing, we'll show you some footage of, of that later on, and your foot on the brake pedal and of course your handbrake on is very important when the car is in packing, unless your car is damaged and your handbrake is not working, then you can get away with, you know, but, you know, for safety reasons, all these should be working. So my top transmission selector is unpacking, or the gear is unpacking, handbrake is on, my foot is on the brake pedal. And now what I'm, I'm going to do is press on the start button and it's engaged. So um, asking, at this stage, I need to shut the door so I can get to the mirror and try to get it. So bear with me. <coughs> Now, before you move up, it's really important to, to find out what is happening around you. And that is why we have mirrors. We have a driver's mirror, we have a rear view mirror, that's in the middle here, and we have a passenger mirror. So, again, like with a sitting, making sure you're comfortable, make sure you have a clear line of sight as much as possible. And you're comfortable with what you can see behind you because, trust me, objects behind you are usually not where they really are in terms of, you know, appearing, uh, what, what you think you're seeing. You know, it, 
usually the vehicle behind you would be closer, but because of perspective and that kind of stuff with your mirrors, that's why it's really important to engage all mirrors, and especially for you beginners, when you're going for a driving lessons, tutorials, or if you're going to pass the test and uh, get your driver's license, what your instructor is going to be doing without making it too apparent is making sure or checking to see if you're always engaging with your mirrors as you're driving. So even before I start off moving the car, my foot is still on the brake uh, pedal. Mind you, even though the car isn't parking, you know, and of course the handbrake is on, I check my mirrors like, you know, I look, look, this one, look at this one, and I look at the passenger side, well it seems all nice and clear. So what am I going to do next? I'm going to traffic gate, you know, if you're at the front of the car, you see the traffic gator, you know, of course, this is not a rule, but we're just trying to get you up, guys, up to scratch and making sure that you understand all the little bits and technicalities that go into driving so that, you know, you, you, you turn out to be a decent or a good driver. So what the indicator is doing is letting everybody around you know that I am about to go what? Left, because I've engaged it, uh, the uh, left indicator. So. Now that I've checked and it's all clear around me, what do I do? Okay, well, there's somebody coming, so maybe ideally we'll just wait a little while. But what I'll be doing next is, you know, with my foot on the brake pedal still, I can turn my handbrake off. And uh, unfortunately, we still have a few people still coming across, but that's fine. We'll just give them a, a, a couple moments. And uh, once they pass by, we can move the car forward because... Uh, I, I would have moved forward, but then of course for beginners, we just want to make sure you're pulling the right procedure, you know, making making sure things are nice and safe. So I think the coast is kind of clear. So I left, I release my handbrake, still checking my mirrors, and I've, I know I've indicated left. So I then go to my gear or top selector and I engage the car and drive, and then taking my foot off the brake gently and looking, I move off. So as I'm driving, um, I'm going to demonstrate how to turn with uh, the, the two ways in terms of the grip, you know. So first indicating, I'm indicating left, I use a shuffle, what I, some people call a shuffle method, you know, it's like you feed the steering wheel into, into your hands as, you are, as the car is going along. I'm going to do it again and watch always as one hand gripping the steering wheel so once the car is fully turned i bring it back and you know we keep the vehicle straight so that's where the, the first kind of turning procedure kind of you know a shuffle feeding it into your hands in terms of the steering wheel you know and then i'm going to uh get back to a straight path and then there's a kind of, uh, there's another bit we, uh, okay, motorbike coming, so let's just pause, wait for him to go by, and then I'll demonstrate another turning technique. Okay, so moving forward again, but again, going to be turning left. So now what I'm going to be doing is more like a crossover, so indicating left. So I start with my right hand, watch. So that's more like, a, like you know, the hands cross over without, you know, getting in the way. So if I'm turning left, I indicate again and see it crosses, but I do not get my hands confused. And like I'm saying, always ensure that one hand is firmly gripping the steering wheel whenever you're turning. And then, of course, when the car is going straight, you have both hands firmly gripping the steering wheel in that nine, three o'clock position and I'm bringing the car to a halt uh, automatic so what am I doing I'm stepping on the brake once the car has stopped what am I going to do um, I'm going to with my my left hand on the steering wheel and my foot on the brake pedal I then engage the car into parking so you heard all that noise now the car is on parking what am I going to do next I get hold of my handbrake with pressing a little knob on most cars it's going to be a handbrake like this or some cars have a button you press but this is the model we have and this is what we're working with and hopefully in the course of uh, other episodes we can demonstrate other bits you know with different car models so what I, what do i do i press on 
the handbrake and I pull it up and the car is secure now because you have parking which is kind of like a first gear uh, kind of thing for a manual car and then we have the handbrake and so now it's safe for me to take my foot off the brake pedal and what do I do next I can then switch the engine off and the car is completely neutral and it's off and of course if I want to step out of the vehicle I disengage my seat belt and that's it so it's that simple for moving a car uh, what do you call it from uh, from zero to uh, whatever you know uh, and, 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 and getting the car engaged on the road so um, I think that's gonna be it for this stage of the, the driving tutorial of course we will bring you some more as we uh, go along with subsequent episodes episodes so um i think now it's uh, safe for us to move on to the next bit of the show It's about our heritage. It's about our culture and tradition. It's about togetherness. It is about creativity. It is about networking. It is about promoting innovation. It's about two exciting weeks of wonderful activities. Jamboree is coming. Anticipate. Anticipate.